Cherry will be making a big comeback to the Malaysian market very soon with this, the all-new Omoda 5. This is a super high-spec, funky-looking B-segment SUV that will be a direct rival to the popular Proton X50 and Honda HR-V. We've been given an exclusive early look at this car before launch and I think a lot of you should be paying close attention to this one. I'll tell you why in this video. Let's go. First, a quick reintroduction to the Cherry brand. Over the past few years, it has been one of the fastest growing car brands from China. Most recently, it's had a stellar 2022 selling over 1.2 million vehicles, with close to 40% of them delivered outside of China. Cherry has been the top exporter among all car brands from China over the past 20 years. Now in 2023, it's making a big comeback across multiple right-hand drive markets, including Australia, Indonesia, and of course, Malaysia. The brand is showing very clear and serious intent to penetrate the local market. So instead of coming here through a local third-party distributor like BYD, Cherry is setting up its own subsidiary company right here in Kuala Lumpur. And while most other companies, including Geely, will start off very slowly with a run of CBU fully imported cars to begin with, this car right here, the Omoda 5, will be locally assembled right here in Malaysia from the get-go. The message is very clear, Cherry Malaysia is here to stay and they mean business. Now let's talk about the car itself, starting with the bizarre looks. Calling the Omoda 5 unique would be a massive understatement. The centerpiece is of course this big massive grille down here and front grilles are usually just mere frames or inserts that are tacked on to the front bumper but not this one. The entire thing is actually integrated into the front end. And if you look closely, the chrome bits are actually shaped like diamonds. It does not get any more bling than this. The headlight layout is different too. At the top, you've got this T-shaped LED daytime running lights and down here, there's a cluster of LED projectors. The wheels are pretty distinctive as well. These are 18 inches with a rather fetching black and red two-tone finish. Speaking of red, you'll see a lot of it here on this car, regardless of the exterior color of your choosing. Whether it's this gray, the black, or the white, each one will come with a lot of red trimmings all around, including the brake calipers. From the back, the Omoda 5 perhaps doesn't look quite as striking as it does from the front, but it does have quite a few interesting details. The roof line slopes down quite dramatically, but it does so without affecting headroom, which I'll show you in a bit. And together with a steeply rigged rear window, it looks like a properly sporty SUV. At the top, you've got this double layer rear spoiler with the top half finish in body color and the bottom layer in red. The taillights are all LED with a full width design and just like the front, it does a bit of a dance to say hello or goodbye every time you lock or unlock the car. Speaking of that, this car does have an automatic unlock and lock feature so you can just keep the key in your pocket, walk towards it and it will unlock by itself and vice versa, just walk away from it and it will automatically lock the doors by itself. And that works perfectly with the light show because when it engages, you are far enough from it to enjoy the show. The one thing I'm not a big fan of is of course the obviously fake exhaust pipes down here. This car actually does have twin tailpipes but they are hidden behind the rear bumper. So while the Omoda 5's exterior may have a bit of a polarizing love it or hate it design, inside here it should be much more universally liked. Overall, I think it looks fantastic, it feels high tech and it's super high quality as well, much more so than both the Proton X50 and the Honda HR-V. So the first thing you'll see is the double display setup which is quite common among modern cars recently. The instrument cluster is a full widescreen display with three distinct themes to choose from. In the middle here you also have a Tesla style display where the car detects where the road lights are and you can even distinguish between cars, bikes and trucks and so on. It looks really cool. And then for the center screen, you've got a very simple design, very easy to use with the usual voice command gimmick. Now, instead of saying the exact word, hello, cherry, you can even pre-program it to respond to whatever you want, like, you know, hello, boss, hello, car, whatever it is that you want. 
the system can even detect who is giving the command whether you're sitting in the driver's seat or the passenger seat so you can tell them to open individual windows on this car it's all pretty neat and one thing i'm sure you've seen by now is this button over here it's got carplay and even better than that it's completely wireless carplay now that's going to be the first time for a car in this price range in this class to have this feature so much for chinese cars not being allowed to have carplay now is there moving further down you've got your aircon controls within this black bar over here these are touch operated but at least they are dedicated aircon controls and not embedded within the screen this i don't mind so much by the way this is a proper dual zone climate control system which is a step up compared to both the x50 and the hrv down here is a wireless charging pad for your mobile devices in a very similar setup to what we've seen in both the Tesla Model 3 and Y. I think it looks pretty good and it's lined in suede as well. Another thing I really like is the gear selector down here. This has the vibe of a Porsche or an Audi. It feels really nice in your hands, easy to use as well with a dedicated park button down there. This feels super expensive, very premium. Other than that, this car also has a physical volume knob which is nice to have and all the buttons on the steering wheel work with a clicky feel, almost like an Audi which brings us down to build quality where I think this car is super impressive. The leather on the steering wheel has a nice fine grain to it and the seats are equally beautiful to look at and comfortable to sit in. And then you have the top of the dashboard over here which has a nice rubbery soft feel to it. I think this feels far more expensive than most of the cars in the class. Of course, as you move down, everything gets slightly harder and far more scratchy as well. But everything feels very, very solid in here. I'd say this is by far and away the best feeling interior in the class. One more thing that I really appreciate is the near perfect conversion into right-hand drive. The steering wheel is dead on center to the driver and even the footwell is nice and wide with a proper footrest on the left side. A lot of cars from China coming into right-hand drives don't get this right. This one absolutely spot on. But having said that, it's not quite perfect because you still see quite a few remnants of this car being primarily designed as a left-hand drive car. Number one, the USB ports down here on the left side. As a driver, yeah, there is no way you can reach down and hook up your cables down there. On the right side, on my side, there is a 12 volt power socket instead. I think that should have been reversed. And then at the top here, there is a dedicated USB port for your dash cams. But instead of being on the left side as it should be, it's actually on the right side where if you were to install a dash cam, it's gonna block the driver's view. Not ideal. One last thing I don't like is the sunroof over here. It's quite small, it's not quite a full glass roof like in the Proton X50. And worse yet, it has a manual cover or sunshade. But then again, the Honda HRV doesn't even have one to begin with, so this is still an upgrade, I guess. As for audio, the Omoda 5 gets an 8-speaker Sony premium sound system, which is actually pretty good and easily much better than the ones in the X50 and the HRV. Another standout feature for this car is the use of laminated or double glazing windows at the front. These are basically two sheets of glass sandwiched together to block out more wind noise than usual. And it's something you normally see in the top end of cars like the Mercedes-Benz S-Class, the BMW 7 Series, Range Rovers and so on. To have it in a car like this is completely unheard of. At the back, the Omoda 5 is fine, if not great. In terms of legroom, it's quite okay. It's about the same as a Proton X50, but not quite a match to the Honda HRV. As for headroom, I've got plenty left. For your reference, I am 167 centimeters tall, and I've got plenty of legroom and headroom left. The bench itself is also pretty comfortable, although the backrest is a touch too upright for my liking, and you cannot adjust the angle either. But other than that, it's all nice and soft and very supportive. You've also got the usual rear aircon vents, a single USB charging port, full LED cabin lighting over here, 
and even full automatic up and down rear windows. One thing I don't really like is the relatively high floor for the rear cabin. So sitting in the back, your knees are slightly higher. It's slightly less comfortable over long distance journeys. Now this is because the Omoda 5 is built on a brand new platform that supports a full electric application as well. So they've had to raise the floor slightly to fit in all the batteries underneath. Now speaking of that, the Omoda 5 EV is also coming to Malaysia. That's yet another thing for us to be excited about very soon. As for the boot, the Omoda 5 has a 360 liter cargo space, again matching the X50 if not quite the HRV. Under the floor, there is a space saver spare tire and the top spec version also comes with an electric tailgate. Under the bonnet, which has proper struts by the way, is a 1.5 litre four-cylinder turbocharged engine, here making 145 horsepower and 230 newton meters of torque. Power goes to the front wheels via a CVT with nine virtual ratios. Now, while the power outputs are significantly less than a Proton X50, but in my brief driving experience of this car, if anything, it feels about the same or maybe even quicker than the Proton, while the CVT is easy much more responsive, quicker reacting than the Hondas. As for safety, the Omoda 5 gets pretty much everything you need or want. There's the usual six airbags, electronic stability control, and a full suite of ADAS active safety systems as well. This includes autonomous emergency braking or AEB, lane keep assist, lane departure warning, adaptive cruise control, level two semi-autonomous driving, blind spot monitor. Yeah, pretty much everything you want. This even includes traffic jam assist. The Cherry Omoda 5 also has a full five-star crash safety rating from Euro NCAP, which as as we all know is far more stringent than our own ASEAN NCAP or even A NCAP. So before you start thinking this is a bit of an unproven car from China that might be unsafe, well, think again. Now onto the all important pricing. Of course, Cherry Malaysia has not yet given us the full figures, but you just know it's going to be priced in between the top spec Proton X50, which is around 114,000 ringgit, and the Honda HRV Turbo V, which is about 135,000 ringgit. And you know what? Speaking to the Cherry bosses, I have a feeling it's going to be priced closer to the Proton rather than the Honda. And yes, I'm talking about the top spec version that you see here with everything in it. Excited yet? I think it's about time the Proton X50 gets proper competition right here in Malaysia. So that's my quick preview of the upcoming Cherry Omoda 5. Like I said in the beginning, if you're in the market for an SUV like this, keep a close eye on this one. So what do you think of this car's looks, the interior, the specs, and of course the prices? How much would you be willing to pay for this car? Comment all that below. For now, thank you for watching and stay safe everyone.